the capital of Scotland and famous for its medieval architecture. What is worth seeing in Edinburgh? I spent five days here in January 2022, visiting all areas of this historic city and many of the key attractions. So in this video, I'll be showing you each place that I visited, guiding you on what there is to see there and whether it was really worth seeing. Starting with Old Town, the core of Edinburgh, filled with medieval architecture, cobbled streets and bagpipes. You'll feel like you've arrived in Scotland straight away. Victoria Street is a must visit and considered the inspiration for Diagon Alley in Harry Potter. You can find plenty of independent stores here as well as one of the best hog roasts in Edinburgh, Oink. The next attraction that you couldn't possibly miss is Edinburgh Castle. Sitting on top of an extinct volcano, this was home to kings and queens for centuries. Admire the picturesque views of Edinburgh, stroll along the Half Moon Battery and visit the Prisoners of War exhibition. There's also the daily one o'clock gun. To be honest, there isn't much to read on the history and for that you need to pay extra for the audio guide. If you want to get a great view of the castle from below, I'd recommend the Venal Steps where you can get these types of photos. Beside the steps is also a gem of an ice cream place called Mary's Milk Bar and they have new flavours every day. We got the ricotta coffee and the lavender honey and these were both incredible, even in the middle of winter. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, make sure to visit Greyfriars Kirkyard. It's a graveyard where you can find Tom Riddle and Mr. McGonagall, the inspirations for the name of the characters in the book. Moving on to Carlton Hill, a short walk from the city centre and 10 minutes up some steps, you'll find yourself with sweeping views of Edinburgh and the Doug Old Stewart Monument. You'll also find the iconic National Monument of Scotland there, which looks Greek but is actually modelled over the Parthenon in Athens. I'd recommend coming up here on a good day. It's a great spot to have a picnic or watch the sunset. There is another hike though that has even more amazing views I'll get onto later. So if you have a few more days in Edinburgh and you're into your art or your history, you can check out the Scottish National Gallery, St Giles Cathedral or the National Museum of Scotland, where you can find more about Scottish culture and see Dolly the Sheep, the first ever mammal to be cloned from a cell. I would also recommend the Palace of Holyrood House, which is actually where the Queen stays when she comes up to Scotland. However, we didn't go in as this was more of a food and nature trip. Speaking of food, you can find traditional Scottish cuisine at Macca's Gourmet Mash Bar, just off the Royal Mile, which is the main road going through Old Town. Each dish is served with a different type of gourmet mash. I got the beef shoulder with the bacon mash. This was superb. Make sure you also try haggis when you're up north. Although if I told you what it was made of, you'd probably feel a bit disgusted. If you want local market food, you can also check out Stockbridge Market. It's a local market that sells scotch eggs and this fantastic seafood paella. Now, the hike that you've been waiting for, Arthur's Seat. If you're looking for the best view of Edinburgh, look no further. This hike takes you up an extinct volcano with 360 degree views of the city. To get up there, it takes around two hours and can be a tricky walk to the summit, but it's totally worth it. To be honest, we didn't actually have enough time to do the whole hike and opted for the trail beside it for the Salisbury Craigs, which I think gives even better views of the city and is much easier. It's super windy at the top and do beware of the edge. Finally, an epic day trip from Edinburgh I'd highly recommend if you want to see more of the nature of Scotland and the beautiful highlands. The Hairy Coo Tour to Loch Ness. This group tour we booked took us up north early, first stopping at Callender, a small village where you can get these delicious brownies for breakfast, followed by Glencoe, a place where you can admire the snowy peaks and take some incredible photos. Unfortunately, there isn't time to walk around or hike, which I'd have loved to for a place so famous for its peaks and waterfalls. Eventually, after a long drive, you'll arrive at Loch Ness and your chance to spot 
the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie. We got some fish and chips first and then we opted for the one hour cruise around the lake to start our search. Unfortunately, it wasn't our luck this time, but if you do visit, let me know in the comments if you spot her. As we headed back to Edinburgh, there was one more notable stop worth mentioning, which was Scotch Corner, a small ice cream parlor with a special local whiskey flavor. And I loved this. Our tour guide Marty was really knowledgeable. A shout out to him for making it so special. Now for some bonus places that we visited that I recommend. Firstly, Dean Village. This is a scenic and quaint area in Edinburgh with medieval houses. There's also a coffee shop not too far away called Cairn Gorn Coffee. It has great brunch foods. And one last notable mention by Edinburgh Castle is a place called Camera Obscura. It has five floors of so-called mind-bending illusions, such as a mirror maze and a spinning vortex tunnel. So is Edinburgh worth visiting? Absolutely. During the middle of winter, it can be very cold and rainy at times, but the architecture is something special. The largest arts festival in the world, the Edinburgh Fringe, takes place here every summer. No matter what time of the year, Edinburgh will keep you on your toes. From a few days or even a week, you can find plenty of places to explore. From hikes to shops, great cuisine and scenic day trips, there really is something for everyone.